how is it not letting me show my video? Rename. Nancy, is that are you there? Yes. All right. Um. So, where do you want me to send my drawings? Um. Send them to me, either by email or text. Okay. I might just, uh, instead of doing the Facebook, I might go ahead and just use my uh, art Instagram account. Okay, so yeah, whatever. Yeah, just send right. it to me, like I said, either in a text or an email, and I can get all that updated. Okay. Okay. Guys, I think we're ready whenever you are to start. Go ahead, Daryl. Am I going first? Yeah, go ahead. I don't know why my picture is not showing, but go ahead. All right. Uh, Real for everyone joining us again tonight. I'm going to try to share my screen. I don't. Can anyone see that? Ooh. <laughs> I guess you can. Um. Today we're going to go over introductions, and if you have any questions, just let us know, and we'll try to answer it the best we know how. But uh, for introductions in Creek, the word for introduction isn't an actual word, so they have to use one to kind of describe <clears throat> multiple words to describe it. So idi gislida, and the infinitive of that word uh, gislida means to know. And then idi just means uh, with one another. So when you put that together, idi gislida, that just means to get to know one another. And so that's what we're going to be doing tonight. And just be, I know probably most of you all know how to introduce yourself in the language. So this is just more of a review. And also just if you don't know how to ask someone else uh, in Creek about their, uh, where they come from, who they are, you know, you'll be able to do it now. But I have uh, up here, Jay told us that word last week, aboka means question. And then ojitski, that means you have. No what, that means if. And then boom or boomi means us. And then abohibas means ask. So aboka, ojitski, no what. If you have a question, boom abohibas, <clears throat> just ask us. And I'm going to try to go along through these. and. Starting with number one, it's always a uh, custom to let everyone know who you are. And, and a lot of times you're a family, but <clears throat> we'll just uh, do your personal name. So, Nagit Jihojifkadi. And uh, what's really helps me is when I learned how to introduce myself was to break these down into different components and what each uh, word means. So, Nagit means what? G means you, Hochifka means name, and then D, that's just put at the end of a <clears throat> sentence to make it a question. And when you put that all together, you have Nagit, what, G, you, or your, Hochifka is your name. So Nagit, G, Hochifka, D. And I know we can't, I uh, wouldn't hear you if you can say it, but it's, it help, it's helpful if you can say it out loud to yourself, get more familiar with uh, pronunciation, Nagat Chihojifkadi, and your name would be like whatever your name is, Oscar Harjo Jahojifkados, 
And this word here differs from this CE in the first line because you're talking about my name. So you say J ja instead of G. And then Hochifka, of course, means name. And then you just put dos at the end and that just uh, make it a sentence. So if um, I went up to Jay and said, Nagit Chiojifkadi, his answer would be Jay Chahojifkados. And like I said, that's, I know everyone's probably familiar with it, but it's helpful to go through each, um, each part of the sentences and the questions. And then uh, number two, this one's talking about your clan. So Nagit Jim Alegida D, Nagit Jim Alegida D. And nugget means what? Jim, just like in the first one, means you when you're talking directly to someone. And then alegda is the word for clan. And that basically just means uh, who do you sit with? And you know, who's your people? And the alternate way to hear that is nugget Jim idilegda doa. And idilegda, idilegda, and alegda. They mean the exact same thing when you're talking about clans. So you can uh, use them both interchangeably. And uh, is the exact same thing as saying D. So you can use whatever one you'd like to use uh, just to ask a question. And uh, you can answer them both two ways. And so if you're a bear clan, you'd say, no gozogi, I'm a And so you're just saying, my, uh, my clan is the bear. And um is a possessive when you're talking about mine. So no gozogi, um alegida dos. You're just saying my uh, my clan, alegida clan is bare. And you also, if you're going to use idilegida, do the same thing. You'll be saying no gozogi, um idilegida dos. And just whatever you're whatever you'd like to do. It's uh, completely up to you. They're both used the same thing as clans. And uh, number three. Uh, how did it say? Um, um, I want to say something real quick that when Daryl was talking about Alegida, he said where you sit with, this word relates back to our olden ways where down at the ceremonial grounds and the Idolwas, clanship was very important. So who you sat with, your clan dictates where you sit with in, inside the ring for men, but also for women too. Certain people could only do certain um, activities like, um, let's say like wind clan and skunk and uh, birds, they could only cook certain foods. So that alegida, you know, going back to what he said, where you sit, it really had a, an important social, um, social value in our in our tribe. So that's why it says Chimalegida, where do you sit? Or the people that you go with. So that, you know, Nakajagi Mahirundos. Inga, Maru for that. I didn't I really didn't know that. <laughs> um other than just knowing what the word means. But uh it's good to have different perspectives on that because as you all know, I didn't really grow, grow up around a traditional setting. So, you know, different meanings like that, they're new to me too. But um, moving on to number three, this one's about your tribal town. And Jay, you might wanna say something after this too about the difference in tribal towns and ceremonial grounds. But Nagit Jim Idolwadi, Nagit Jim Idolwadi, Nagit means what? Jim, uh, Jim means your, and Idolwa is the word for tribal town. So when you're asking someone about their tribal town, you say Nagit Jim Idolwa D. And whatever your tribal town is, if it's um, like uh, Ojiabova, Hickory Ground, you'd say Ojiabova, um, Idolwa Dos. And so you'd say, uh, Again, that VM there, um, just like in the Amalegida, you're just saying my, my tribal town, Amidolwa Dos. So if um, you were to go up to someone and they were, again, uh, Hickory Ground, you'd say, Nagit Jimmy Dolwadi, and they would answer, 
Ojiabova am Idalwa dos. Magna Giaja, Jay. Sure. Um, uh, well, traditionally, back in olden days when we was down in our homelands in Alabama, we had tribal towns. And if you've done Challenge Bowl, you should know about these things. And even if you don't, you, if you hang around Creek people, you'll hear tribal town. But um, tribal town is uh, uh, the most important for your clan and your tribal town are the two most important um, social social constructs, if you will, but social organizations in the tribe. And Amidolwa, you know, when you said that people knew where you were from geographically, but today that's the tribal town has morphed into ceremonial grounds. So some people will use them interchangeably. And Mahi will mention this too, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Number five also says ceremonial ground. Some people will use them um, interchangeably, ceremonial ground and idolwa. But the ceremonial ground came from the idolwa. When they came across on the trail, they, you know, all the tribal towns were still intact. But as time went along, churches came, uh, idolwa split. Some of them just stopped, you know, being stajati. And so, but there's still this, this uh, resonance of the idolwa. You know, when these tribal towns or ceremonial grounds meet together, there's still this, we respect our uh, place, ceremonial ground, and still call it an idola. Now, it's not to be confused with the three tribal towns that exist politically, okay? There's Alabama, Galeji, and Tlaplaco. The only ground that is still a tribal town, fully functioning as a tribal town, and what I mean by fully functioning is, they're a political, sovereign, a political entity, a cultural entity, and they also, you know, they still maintain that um, connection with Alabama Kusadis, the, Kush the Kushadas in Louisiana. Alabama is the only one that still maintains these relationships. But anyways, um, so Idalwa and uh, ceremonial ground can be used interchangeably. Mahogi, Daibas. Thank you for saying that. Uh, number four, this one is asking about where you live or basically where you abide. So you ask someone, Istaman legich kidowa, Istaman legich kidowa. This word here, Jay talked about it last week. Istaman, it has different variations. Uh, you'll hear people say, Tamema or uh, Staman. And if you if you listen to more fluent speakers, they cut their they chop their words up a lot, and they'll say them, they'll shorten them up. Oh, Nancy says, "Aboka Ojes, can you explain the meanings of the D, Dos, and Doa?" I know I've heard this before, but can't remember. Oh, Jay says, "Inga, I'll explain it." So, um. Now, this is important. People need, let's listen up. This is really important. So I'm gonna get a little linguistically, so bear with me. So the dose, okay, let's focus on the dose. Okay. Typically in introductions, you always hear the word dose. Dose is actually a contraction, excuse me, a contraction. Yes, those exist in the Jati world, um, but it's a contraction of domis. And as we further get along in our Actually, tomorrow we're going to do verbs. Um, this week and next week, we're really going to focus on verbs and the importance of verbs. But dos is a contraction of domis, doys, doys. Those are the variants of this. So when Mahi says um, di, like number five, not chinchokosako di, and istaman legichki doa, the di and the doa are one of those things that can also be interchanged. Um, Again, as we further go along, all questions you'll find out end in a uh or a ah, and then t. So I can give y'all examples later, but those are called morphemes. It's very important, morphemes. It's a, um, I'll spell it, morpheme. A morpheme is basically a, meaning, a meaningful sound, okay? So when you hear doa, 
you are you automatically know that it's a question so that signifies that it's a question so stamaman legich kidoma towa it's a question and same thing with the d that's um d not chinjogo sakko d that lets you know that it's a question but if you say dose you know that it's a and everybody says statement <laughs> so those are the difference that's a morpheme so dose is a morpheme doa doa they're all morphemes that signify um uh, the type of sentence that you have dose is just a statement doa doa di those are all uh questions so dais I'll, i'll i'll send some more in the chat about a little bit more on that and uh, i'll go ahead and mention that and i have it down there somewhere but uh, people will use doa or doma and that just depends on uh, where you come from and dialect and people will use w's or m's and like they'll say uh mondo mason instead of mondo wazen that just depends on uh, again where you come from but um continuing on number four, istaman legich kidowa where do you live istaman means where and uh, the infinitive of legichki is legida that just means to sit or to abide to live and ichki when you when you see that uh with the verb you're talking directly to someone you're saying your and uh, jay talked a little bit about it last week where he would put achki and that means y'all and so uh istaman legichki you're talking to one person so istaman legichki doa that just means where do you live and you can uh the second way of saying it is the exact um uh, same thing as legichki and it just depends on uh dialect when people are speaking faster they're normally saying like legichi and that's the exact same thing as legichki and it took me a while to figure that out too but in a lot of times you'll just hear them use that tc right here instead of the ck and if uh more you learn and the more you uh get exposed to the language it's kind of easier to say legichi uh when you're speaking so that's the same thing istaman where legichi um you live doa istaman legichi doa and your answer would be uh okmogi dalova legai dos dalova legai dos and the word dalova means town and the infinitive of lege is legida again to to sit or to live and the way you can uh, identify that uh, you're just talking about yourself is this i and in the alphabet that has the sound a but you could also uh, spell it like this legaidos and you'll see it in that way too but they mean the same thing to me it's easier just to say legaidos and you could also answer by saying um like tosa adaidos and the infinitive of this word is adida which means to come and i know you all probably heard that too You're, someone says adis just means to come here and adai just means uh, i come from tosa you know tosa adaidos and you could also spell that like adaidos and uh, If you read different documents particularly like the bible they'll use v y e instead of i and uh, that's just something i found out here recently too so um so if someone says istaman legich kidowa you could answer by either um saying like hana dalova legedos or hana adaidos i come from if you'll notice there's no dalova in the second one it just means you come from that community or uh, region of wherever you're from and uh <clears throat> this number 5 number 5 like jay said speaks about your ceremonial ground nugget jin jogo sakodi nugget jin jogo sakodi nugget means what Jin means your 
there's just like we mentioned earlier, uh, CE, you're talking directly to someone talking about you. And Jogosako is the word, uh, one of the words for ceremonial grounds. And uh, uh, D, just like Jay was saying earlier, the, it's a question. Or you could put Doa or Doma. And so, Nagit, Jin Jogosako D, what is your ceremonial ground? And if your ceremonial ground is Wiogofki, uh, you'd say Wiogofki an jogothakudos, an jogothakudos. And this uh, VN is, um, again, just a possessive mind. And um, my understanding, you use an N when that next word is just, that next letter is a consonant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so just like, up here on Amidalwa, you'll see it's used with an M. And that's because uh, this next letter here, this Alegida, is a vowel. And that's that way, not just for introducing yourself, but whether you're, no matter what you're talking about, you'll see that. So, an jogosakudos, and nagit, chin jogosakudi, what is your ceremonial ground? And you'll just say your ceremonial ground. An jogosakudos. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nagi. Man, uh, yeah, Joven, my Delwada, Amogam, Manjosako, Ujagi Dundo, man. So when we came over after, even before then, we are tribal towns had townships, and one of those uh, structures in the tribal town was the Chogosako. And that means the big house. So chogo means house. You ever heard chogoji? And it talks about the little, the little room, little house, obviously the bathroom, because it was an outhouse. But chogo means house and thako means big. So what this structure refers to is the big house. Now, uh, if, ever, if, if anybody's ever been to the roundhouse, Philip Deer roundhouse uh, around Okima area, they still, uh, they have a structure that resembles a chogothako. Um, and the chogothako, that was a community center of sorts. They would have birthday parties. You would have, um, think of it like the council house for each tribal town or each ceremonial ground. Each tribal town and ceremonial ground had these structures. Um, but as time went along, they didn't reproduce these or they didn't keep up with them. The last known um, Chogothako, per se, was at Hilebi. In 1867, there's actually documents written about um, the Chogothako. And that was also where they would dance when it would rain out um, down at the ceremonial grounds. Say it, it was raining, somebody would have to take care of the fire or they would bring those ashes inside of that Chogothako. Um, ashes and coals and so they would maintain those dances inside that that house so think of it as like a community center so that's and this term really originated after um, removal because there were a few chogothakos left but that's um you know again hidalwa chogothako do the same thing but that's why they called it chogothako because at one time every ground used to have a, a big house dais Jay, isn't there a, another one, Moi, uh, that you that you use? There's a lot of different names you can call uh, ceremonial ground, stomp ground, idolwa, but the three or the ones that I also use is a um, uh, it's called a Pascova. I don't um, Nanji has a relative name Pascova. Pascova. Uh, refers to if you've ever been out to the ceremonial ground they have the ring and there's that earthen mound that goes up and you step in and you're kind of in the arbor area the dancing area so to speak Baskova refers to that that area uh, the ring so to speak and so sometimes you'll hear people say Hilabi Baskova the ring of Hilabi or where they dance in Hilabi. Bas Basida means to sweep Ova means inside, so they're saying the area where you sweep. And again, that's more Muscogee history, but uh, before they dance, they'll sweep that area during green corn to clean it off and to do it as a, a 
to renew the ground. So that's what they call the, sometimes you'll hear the Idalwa, Chogotako, or Paskova. Those three terms all uh, relate to ceremonial ground and stomp grounds. So, Daibas. Thank you, Mahis. And this last one is number six. It talks about your church. And Istaman Migozap Kajogo, Ayich Kidowa. Istaman Migozap Kajogo, Ayich Kidowa. The word just like we've been using, Istaman means where, or it's one way you can say where. And Migozap Kajogo is the word for church. And uh, Mikozapka, that means, uh, the infinitive of that is Mikozabida, which means to pray. And just like Jay said a moment ago, Jogo is house. So the word for church is just house of prayer. And uh, the infinitive of that word is Aida, which means to go, to go of well, one person to go. Because it's different when you go two or more people or three or more people. But um, the infinitive of that is Aida to go and Ichki, uh, talking directly to one person, you, you go. And so when you say that, you're saying, Istaman, where? Mikozap Kajogo, church, Aichki, you go. So Istaman, Mikozap Kajogo, Aichki Rowa, where do you go to church? And I just put that in there again to see that you can use this interchangeably, ayichi or ayichki, just whatever you would like to use. And it means the same thing. And then also here, doma. There's a woman who goes to our church, Rosemary Maxi. She uses the M's a lot. And uh, whereas I never did really hear that, but from her, she uses doma, but I'd rather use doa. I don't know why, but. Anyway, uh, the, and your answer to that would be, um, like if your church was Wiogofki, you'd say Wiogofki, Migozap Kajogo, Aye Dos. Migozap Kajogo, of course, means church, and Aye Dos just means uh, I go. And again, if you'd like, you can read it like that, Aye Dos, but that's confusing to me, so I just use Aye Dos. And, uh, so if someone said, if I were to ask Jay, Istaman, Migozap Kajogo, Ayich Kidowa, his answer would be Thawafli, Migozap Kajogo, Ayedo, Sago to Thawafli Church. And those are just some basic introductions that I, uh, I kind of learned when I started out. It's understanding each component of each sentence and each question has definitely helped me in uh, listening to people talk. And so that's, that's the last one. Uh, but it was in market. Inga, man, he's the condo, condo as man, uh, uh, how you mean storage? Um, the so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, introductions and greetings. Um, hey, okay, now I can see you. Um, let me go up here. So if uh, I hope everybody got my Google invite for what I was, uh, for everything. I know Nancy had the list, but I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, and I'm going to share some of the things that I have wrote up. So one of the things that we talk about, you know, we want to orient ourselves in Muskogee uh, worldviews, Muskogee lifestyles. But, you know, traditionally, you don't go up to somebody and say, hi, or hello, or howdy. You know, we, some people say, oh, we're, Muskogees are rude, and that's partially true. But um, the word hello does not exist in our language. Now, as time has went along, we've created terms such as hinchje. I'm sure everybody has heard that, hinchje, or hishishje. It's another dialect. Hinchje, hishishje. Inst they're all variations, but it literally means all is well. So when you say that, you know, when you go up to someone and say, it's Jay, you're saying all is well. And again, this term was, was created as time went along to adapt to English. So we could have a word for hello. 
but that that didn't exist in our our uh, I guess Irikishida, you know, when we got to know each other. What really existed was Istongo, you know. We just got right to the point. How are you? Because hello, sure it breaks the ice, but how you're doing is more to get to know a person, you know. And so we use that for um for hello. I know Mahi man uh Jiash Noah, you know, Panayas. But I when I, when people ask me how you say hello, I said there's not really a word for that when we say stongo. And uh chinda not I guess I did sa Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, normally I don't, uh, the word his J has always been kind of, I never did hear that really growing up. It was always stone go. I never even heard is stone go, you know, people would just, I've even heard it shortened to don't go. And that's kind of like you said, more, more personal because you're asking them how they're doing. And, uh, and I've heard that too, though, his J, that's not really word for hello. You're just, you're just going up to somebody and going, saying good. And that's really yeah proper way to to start a conversation but mm -hmm. yeah so he sees I'm, I'm sure y'all have heard of he sees he sees mahi or he sees you know he sees really means good so you know he sees stay good <laughs> and you know the j you're adding emphasis so you're just saying good so you go up to someone shake their hand good that's literally what you're saying and, you know, again, that's kind of more adhering to English standards of communication. Whereas the Jari way, Stongo or Stongo Fulachka, how are y'all doing? So um, let me let me go on. I've I've added a few to our uh, list that just kind of did it. So oh, you didn't go over age, Javon. You forgot number seven. Well, nice. Or <laughs> okay, um, number seven, I forgot to go over it. <laughs> when you're asking, when you're asking someone about uh, their age, that Najuli, uh, not that first word, Najuli means how many. And uh, you also hear people say Najumi, and they'll just interchange that M with the W. But uh, you'll hear people say Najuli Jitcha. And that means how old are you? But really, you're just asking them how many are you. <laughs> but mm -hmm. <laughs> translated as how old are you? How much are you? And the other way to say that is najoe jitchka. And that's again, you can say jitcha or jitchka, and it just depends on the dialect. And your answer would be uh, balin. How old you are? Balin ostbokagen uh, amajulgados and that ajulga just means uh, old. So you're really just saying um, 19, I'm, I'm as old as 19 is basically what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Oldness is 19. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's another one. Or you could just say uh, 19 doez, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You really don't hear people use numbers when they're speaking because they're just kind of long, kind of hard to say and remember and take a long time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's just use regular numbers. But. Mm -hmm. Man, hadam We're going to get back to what I kind of was saying about the stongo. So to one person, I'm sure everybody's heard that, but stongo. You say that to one person, okay? And then you can say, stonge zos. I'm doing fine. Stonge zos. Again, this is a contraction of the os, that's even more contracted. Instead of saying dos, you can just say os. So again, more contracted into. As Mahi was saying, we cut out certain things. And when we get to talking, they're on our we. I know I do this a lot. I, I won't even say like does, you know, 19 does. I wouldn't even say that. I would say 19 does. So again, uh, you'll, you'll kind of catch on to our uh, speaking styles. But now, tomorrow, when we uh, all join on, Daryl or, Daryl or I will say, Stongon Fulachka, Stongon Fulachka, how are you all? Okay, so let's say, uh, let's see, who can I pick on? 
I see Claudia, so I'm gonna pick on Claudia. She won't care. <laughs> what Claudia likes? Let's say they're emceeing an event. Okay, let's say it's the veterans breakfast or something. And she wanted to address them traditionally. She could stand up there and say, So she's asking, how is everybody? You know, trying to, trying to gauge the crowd. And a, a response to that would be, Hitlin Fulis, Hitlin Fulis. And uh, Fulis, we'll, we'll get into it when we get to verbs. Be patient with this, because when we get to verbs, we're going to Mars and back and then to Saturn, because there's a lot of technical things there, but it's important to know. But Fulis means uh, more than more than three people, how, how the, the way they go about, basically. So estongon fulachka means, how are you going about, basically? And then hichlin fulis, we're going about good, okay? So that's um, how you could respond to, how are you all? We're going about good. Hichlin fulis, you know, and you can say this at um, youth council meetings or anything like that, really. But uh, anyways, um, does anybody have any questions? If you got any questions, come on now and send them in there or anything like that. Unmute yourself, say, I don't understand, or I've heard it this way, you know, anything like that. Or chat box, raise your hand, anything like that. But uh, let's see, can y'all, okay. Hey, uh -oh. Can you scroll back up to number nine? Number nine, number nine. Hey, la, there ain't no number nine. <laughs> we go from, that's, that's how you count in traditional creek. You go eight, ten, eight. <laughs> I was wondering, I wasn't too sure. <laughs> Where can I find this, Winnie? Does a boga jazz mean a boga o jazz? O jazz. I have o jazz. A boga o jazz. Uh, I see what happened, Claude. Yes, you're right. Typo, huh? I just typed it in. And there was a typo. I take ASL. I typed it wrong. My bad. Yeah. yeah. I was That's just asking. Is that, is that terminology that was uh, taught in the last? Uh, yes. Uh, it, was, okay. it was mentioned a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so something that was brought to Daryl and I's attention was, um, again, we, we want to help everybody learn. Um, Winnie, uh, we're going to, this, this is going to be available recording, so you can refer back to this. Um, if you would like any of the documents or any publications, we can find them and send them your way or any, anybody's way. Um, but most of this, again, like Stajadi way, it's not really written down, like the story of the houses or Hilebi. The Hilebi story is written down, but most of these uh, technical or side notes aren't really um, written down, but we can write them down. But um, going back to what I was saying, we were approached after class about our um, different learning styles. So I know some of you can do the traditional, okay, we're gonna say this word, you write it down, then you say it at your house. Some of you may be more visual. So no cards, whiteboard in the back, whatever. Um, and then some people are auditorial. So hearing, can't really do the hand thing, can study or whatever, but we can do auditorial. And so one of the things that I wanna encourage um, people to do, or those of you that are with me, um, I, we would like you guys to practice reading and practice conversating in styles. Now, I know this can be a little intimidating, saying it to a large group, but we really want to encourage somebody to um, read or provide um, 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 their, let's say, where they live or something like that. So at this time, I'm going to call, I'm going to ask that somebody um, maybe tell us where they're from or tell us what church they're from, what their clan is, and um, and then maybe we'll just popcorn around. But we want to get people used to speaking. You know, if you don't speak it, it's true. You do lose it. So it, it's, again, it's not for our purposes. It's more so for your purposes. So you can keep 
saying it and repetitive, you know, it's good to be repetitive. To, have, to produce a fluent speaker, you need over 600 hours of language learning. That's research, 600 hours. And so again, if you're not getting better, then you're getting weaker, right? That's what they used to say in basketball, at least at P-Town. But it's true, if we're not working towards becoming fluent and using it every day and replacing our words, then, you know, we'll, we'll forget them. And so it's important that we, we try to use these words. So I'm, I'm gonna ask um, anybody, if you wanna say, you know, my name is, or my clan is, um, or what is your name? Anything you wanna say, I ask that you just go ahead and say it. So, toga. Oh, Morgie Delova, Leggy Dose. Maru. Good job, Arlene. Oh, Morgie Delova, Leggy Dose. Good. That sounds real good. Anybody else want to say something? Hadok Gogi, I'm a Leggy Dose. Good. Hadok Gogi, I'm a Leggy Dose. Good. Mm -hmm. Miss Miss uh, Nancy, you want to say something for us? Reminder: Take yourself off mute. <laughs> Looking for a question. Um, I don't know if I have a. Let me look just a second. I was looking for one. That's okay. not. Okay. <laughs> I'll do one though. Okay, good. Mado, I know we have Tahila, um, Aisha, Winnie, Aaron. Um, Jasmine, Michaela, Sam. So if, if any of you guys want to say these, you know, it'd be good. Hishimahis couldn't do it. Aaron Chahajifkados. Maru, Aaron Chahajifkados. Inga. Alhachi, Nikos of Kojogo, Ayos. Wait, hold on, Magus. I didn't hear the first part. Okay. Anybody else want to say something? Not good, Jim Joko Shakodi. Adam Magus, you said, say that again. Not, you said this one, right? Can you say that again, Tequila? Not good, Jim Joko Shakodi. Uh huh, good. Sounds good. Go ahead, say it loud. Abby Vanos, Jaha Jifkadis. Dinga, Mado Abby. Maro, Maro. Here's them for my archkeys. Jay, a boga orgis. Uh huh, Nagi. So I was taught to say I'm a legida, uh, Alabama, or not, hold on. I was taught I'm a doa, Alabama, Kapati dos. Is that the so, correct way? Uh-huh. Okay. So let's talk about that. So Stajadi way, the, you know, there's different sentence structures. We say, what is your clan? You know, my clan is. You can say it either or. So like, um, so when you say, um, let's say, Daryl Jaho Jifkados, you're saying, Daryl, my name is, right? But you can also say, Jaho Jifkados, Daryl, Dos. Because either way, you're conveying that, you know, it, it may be a little bit different, but I know uh, Paul Fixico, he, he'll have um, his name last. Um, Paul Fixico or Amitalwa. So it's really, you can switch it in these because you're conveying that your tribal town, but you're also saying is my. So you could say, Alabama uh, Kursari, Amitalwa Dos, or you could say, Amitalwa, Alabama Kursari Dos. You know, it's the same thing. Um, and that's a great question because, again, that's dialect. So it really depends on what you're comfortable saying. 
Now I say, I do say, I'm a OG above dos, or OG above dos. I'll say that. You can say either or. Um, I know next week and tomorrow uh, and Thursday, we're going to be focusing on sentence structure. So the different types of how you can make a sentence and how you can change them in the certain ways. So um, I appreciate your question. I know, Michaela. And here's some poor keys. You talk real good. Aboga Ojis. Mado, that was real good. Hello, Mahaya. My wife, I was speaking of. Okay. Now, um, any more questions? Any questions or uh, things you want to go over? We've got about 12 minutes, but we might cut it short tonight. How do you want to go to <laughs> hey Jay. Yes. So how would you say like since you know like I don't the clan you know it's matrilineal goes off the mom but I always say so my dad so you know like I'm the daughter of that clan. Mm -hmm. How would you like say that? Hey yo, Chesky. This is Jari Dewey's moment. Chesky. My, my, I'm creep through my dad, so really she says it like this too. She'll say, uh, Ijewolgi, that's our plan, dear. Ijewolgi, it just did always. And so that just means I am the daughter of the deer clan. Or if you're, uh, if you're a male, you know, it would be it pojido always. Can you talk that? Madu. Inga. Uh, Adam, uh, man, the, the, now we're getting into the more, uh, uh, I guess, how you was raised and what you were told because uh, I'm a high ugly dad, man. I'm not going to be still, I'm a legacy of OGK no art, OGK no art, man. Um, uh, I'm going to get away, go. You met some people may have heard of Alahala Galgi, Sweet Potato Clan. And they used to say that that clan was for people that they're, you know, they didn't have a clan. But there's a large, uh, not large, but there's some discrepancy there because some people, like Mahi said, Ipoji or Ichushti, um, you know, it really, you get into more of what does it mean to be a part of a clan um, and more family, um, I guess, history and also, um, I guess, the ethics of clanship and things like that but really i mean like mahi said what what i've always told is it doesn't you know if your mom isn't you know muskogee and doesn't have a clan take off your dad that's true but okay well what if you know that clan was lost through there so then you have to trace it back you know and so it gets more complicated right and um and you know i'm sure back in alabama they didn't they weren't thinking of these things when they had happened so some people say that's how Ahalagalgi came about is um, you couldn't find the certain lineage back because you know, these clans are passed down orally. You know, if, if you lose them, if somebody loses them, then it's gone. And then how do you revive that? And you know, some people still say, well, if you're Muskogee, then you have those two things. Well, if you don't have a clan, well, then are you must go. So it gets it gets more complicated. Now, what I've always told been heard is it doesn't matter who, which side it comes from. You're still a relative. You still come from that clan. Man, we do man, we do. You know, you still come from those people, and it's important to honor those people in whatever way that is. So I encourage everybody to um, find their clan, but also to um, honor that clan in whatever way that is. You know, if that's saying Ipuchido is, or just saying Mado is, you know, because it's important to honor these things that have survived this long. Man, Oharalagin, man, Ojero, man, Aisha asked, repeat, okay, repeat. Aisha said, repeat number seven, okay. Number seven, Najoe, 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 Chicha. Najui chicha and Najui uh, jichka. Najui jichka. How old are you? 
And then my age, I'm a jogger. I'm a jogger. So, mahi, babuga ojes. Najue de cha. Balen ostebokagen, I'm a jogger. Oh, moi, inga, mandayas. Daibadis. Okay. Comment ojes. Also, on, I was talking about how people will shorten things. First time I heard someone say that, uh, they, didn't, they didn't say it like that. They shortened that up. They said, and they'll, I mean, they'll shorten it up and you, you'll have no idea what's going on. So just be aware of things like that because, and they'll do that for a lot of things. Like, uh, like if you're asking someone, are you, are you going to sing? Normally you would say, Hanichka. But you'll hear people say, hey, Gancha. And then if you're not hearing that, you won't know what they're talking about. But that's just a comment. Maharam, Aisha, Boka, Oji, man, is to repeat, Magadidua. Repeat, no, that we say, Hadam. Hadam, no, that. Hadam. So, Hadam means again. So, you would say, Hadam Magas, say it again. Or Hadam Jayajis, I want more, I want again. So Hadam, you can replace that, Hadam. Hadam Mejas, do it again. So repeat your action. So essentially repeat means Hadam, or Hadam means repeat. Um, hadam Chihijah, please. Again, we will see each other. Um, you know, Hadam and repeat, the same thing. Marapomer to do it. Okay, well, how you want? 654, or man, moja, moja, no, moja, no, 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 Okay, so tomorrow, it was good to see everybody. It's great seeing y'all. Y'all did good. Um, keep speaking, keep asking questions, and we'll keep teaching. <laughs> but tomorrow, we're going to do verbs. Okay, now it's important that you come focused. Fast and pray if you need to. Because this, I'm telling you, this gets, it gets complicated because there's so many things that you can do with verbs, but they're important to learn. Daryl and I both learn through verbs. and um, the person he mentioned earlier, um, Rosemary, she's our number one go-to for uh, verbs, infinitives. You know, you may hear some of these technical terms that we're using. Tomorrow we're going to dive into that because these are important to learn. And they help you learn. Not only stajati, but it helps you in thinking about our worldview, how we see things and how we think about certain things. So tomorrow, um, be ready for that. And we're just going to focus on... Um, Type one verbs. So we'll get into all that tomorrow. But um Lagachkari. So Mate. So it was good to see everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>